So here's an opportunity to try out Gauss's Law, just with a couple more examples. To start, a quick recap and things to note. When you are finding the area, this is the area of the surface you draw. You draw, which means that the r here is the little r, which is the point you care about. All right, so r equals. We're going to call this your observation point. The second thing you need to know is about this q. And the main fact of this is this is your charge enclosed. Charge enclosed. You don't care about whatever is outside of the surface you draw. So remember that you may need to plug in lambda L, sigma A, or rho times volume, depending on what type of surface you have. But all of those are equal to the total charge enclosed right here. Right. The other thing to note is this only works with symmetry. So it has to either look like a sphere, a cylinder, or a plane. So only symmetric cases can use Gauss's Law. So let's look at a couple examples, shall we? The first case is to calculate the electric field outside and inside a uniformly charged, when you see uniformly charged, start thinking rho, sphere, of radius 0.25 meters that carries a total charge of 3 microcoulombs. So let's look at E outside. So for E outside, you're going to draw your surface, and this looks like a what? Sphere, cylinder, or plane. I'm hoping you said sphere, because it's a ball. So it goes around. So here, here's our Gaussian surface, and it has a radius r. So if we start with Gauss's law, which is q enclosed over epsilon naught, and again, our area vector always points this way, perpendicular to the surface, and if you note that the electric field from this will also point this way, so in this case, your angle between these is zero degrees. Cosine zero is one. So if we write this, we know our electric field at point r is the area. This is going to be the area of our shape, which is a sphere. The area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared equals. Now this q enclosed, what are we enclosing? Well, we're enclosing the entire sphere. So this is just our q total over epsilon naught. Solving this, you get your electric field. That's the a vector, I should remember that. Your electric field is equal to total charge on the sphere over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared r hat. Uh, this r hat, you have to observe, and you know the electric field is coming out of the sphere, so that's why it is radially outward. And that's the case. You just use the total charge because you enclose the total sphere. So let's see what happens inside. So inside, this is a little bit different. Again, we'll start with Gauss's Law just as above, except now this is our Gaussian surface, a distance little r, and our total distance is big R. So the left hand side is exactly the same way. Again, you've got your area vector pointing out, and your electric field points out. So they're in the same direction, so you get E, we drew a sphere, so that's 4 pi little r squared, Again, this little r is always where your observation is, which is also the boundary of your surface. So 4 pi r squared. Now here's the weird part, the q enclosed. You're only enclosing just a little piece. So you're not using the total charge on the sphere, you are using the charge density, so this is rho times volume, that you are enclosing over epsilon naught reason we were able to write rho, which, if we look at this, rho equals q total over volume total. It's a uniform charge density. All that charge is smeared all around here. All right. So looking at this, let's plug in these numbers. You get E, 
4 pi r squared equals, plugging that expression in for row, q toad over v toad. I'm going to use the volume of a sphere, so 4 thirds pi big R cubed times your v enclosed, which 4 thirds pi, in this case it's little r cubed, little r cubed because you're only going out to here, all right, you're not enclosing the full thing, all over epsilon naught. So if we look for what cancels out, you'll see 4 thirds pi, 4 thirds pi is cancel. I'm going to cancel out two of those. You get your electric field. Let's write this in yellow, just so it stands out. Your electric field inside equals Q tote, total charge times r all over 4 pi radius of the sphere cubed epsilon naught. And the reason you get this funny term right here is because as you go outward, you're going to get more and more charge. So if you look at this, we'll call this electric field versus radius. This right here is going to be big R. Your electric field will go up, 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 and then once you hit the boundary, then it starts dropping off as 1 over r squared. So when you have a charge and you're not enclosing the whole thing, you have to express the enclosed charge as a function of density, which is the total charge over the volume total. Let's look at a couple other examples. Here, we have a conducting electric field inside and outside, a conducting cylinder. What does a conductor tell you? Anytime you see a conductor, E inside equals zero. And this is because all of this charge, I'm just going to put a plus charge, just meaning we stripped electrons, all of the charge is going to lie on the outside of a conductor. So conductors are your best friends. Now, for the outside field, it's a cylinder, so let's draw a cylinder for our surface. I'm going to... This cylinder is going to be of length L, and again, that's just some arbitrary length, and then we're going to make it a distance, I'm just going to call this R from the inside. So starting with Gauss's law again, hope you're seeing a pattern here, over epsilon naught. Let's look at this real quick. You know that there are three area sections. There's area on the bottom, there's an area vector on the side, and then there's an area vector on the top. And as we've talked about this, your electric field, your E, only goes outward, all right, in straight line, which means your E only passes through the side. So that's the only one you have to worry about. So you've got E times area. In this case, this is the side of a cylinder. So that's 2 pi r L equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Now here again, we don't know how much charge is enclosed, so we've got to express this in terms of density, which we do know. So you get E times 2 pi R L equals, we had a linear charge density, so that's lambda, which is coulombs per meter. Coulombs per meter, you want coulombs, so multiply that by length over epsilon naught. Looking in this arbitrary length that we assigned, cancels out. So then you get that your electric field E equals lambda over 2 pi r epsilon naught. And I'm going to call that r hat or away from the center. I'll just call this your electric field is in the out direction. And that's how you get it. Again, the key component, you are expressing Q in terms of a density times a length because you had a linear density. The type of density you are given tells you what you have to multiply it by. So one more case, and let's mix it up. There's only, well, coincidence, there's only one more type of symmetry. Guess what it is? It's an infinite conducting plane, which means it goes to infinity and beyond. I don't know if you've seen Toy Story, but that meant that it went all the way over here. Um, so let's say you've got a little charge right here, minus 3 coulombs. The electric field from that charge, 
negative. It's the way a positive charge goes. So this one's going to pull. I'm going to call that E minus. And then you've got an electric field from that plane. So if we look at this, positives repel, so it's going to go here, and this would be your E plus from the plane. So what you're going to figure out is that your total electric field, because electric field superimposed, is going to be E for the minus charge plus your electric field from the plane. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to move this real quick. Let's do for the minus charge, so E tote equals E minus plus E plane. And if we remember, if we draw a Gaussian pillbox of A and A, and again, we use Gauss's law, you get EA plus EA. Uh, this is coming from the electric field going up and down here through just the top and bottom areas equals sigma A, which is over epsilon naught. That's because this is the charge enclosed. Whoops, forgot they had the lightsaber. I'm going to put that away because that gets dangerous real fast. Um, there we go, that's better. All right, so we'll plug this in, and we get that E for the plane is equal to sigma. Notice those A's cancel out over 2 epsilon naught. So taking this a step down, also notice that both of these add together in the y hat direction because they were both pointing up again. E minus pulls you towards the minus charge. E for the plane pushes you towards the plane. So the minus charge right here is exactly like it always is. This is just Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. In this case, it's going to be 0.2 meters squared. All right. And then for the plane, this is just going to be sigma over 2 epsilon naught. And then this is all in the y hat direction, just from our drawing that we drew, which again tells you that you should always, always draw a picture. And then you just add the point charge field to the field from the plane. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please stop by, see me, see the tutors, and I will see you in class.